As you know, we have a congregational Bible reading plan going at the minute with five readings per week. They're available on our Facebook page and the church website. The reading for this morning was 2 Kings chapter 5. It's a famous story of Naaman, the soldier, the general of the country of Aram, being healed from his leprosy. It made quite an impact on me and I just thought I'd like to share what I learned and also to use it to advertise the benefits of doing these Bible readings. So I just want to read out what I've written down from 2 Kings chapter 5 today. On the day that Donald Trump leaves office as President of the United States of America and Joe Biden takes over, we have in 2 Kings chapter 5 a study in the contrast between divine power and worldly power. We're introduced to Naaman, the top soldier in the neighboring country of Aram. He's powerful in war, in politics, and in his position in society, but faced with the life-threatening disease of leprosy, he's absolutely powerless. He can't save himself. And in this story, Naaman, like Nebuchadnezzar later in the Old Testament is humbled in a variety of ways. He's humbled first of all in that the solution to his problem comes from someone who is the weakest of the weak and the lowest of the low. A little slave girl whom he captured from Israel who knows that the prophet in Israel, Elisha, has the answer to Naaman's leprosy. She knew the living God. He's humbled also by being rebuked by his servants when he stomps off in a rage when Elisha tells him to bathe in the River Jordan. He's humbled by having to wash in the foreign, muddy waters of Jordan instead of the great rivers of his own city of Damascus. He's humbled by the simplicity of the way of healing, not to do some great thing, but to do a simple thing like bathe in the river. He's humbled by having to uh, refuse the gifts or that Elisha refuses his gifts of payment and money for the healing. He's humbled by having to apologize to Elisha that in the future he's going to have to accompany the king to the temple of Rimmon, a foreign god. Naaman is well and truly humbled. He pays a high price, but the reward that he reaps is his healing, complete healing from leprosy. He was healed by the God before whom he was humbled. But there are three other people in the story who stand as witnesses to us of very important truths. The first is the king of Israel. When Naaman heard that he could be healed in Israel, he went to the king. Now the king was not only helpless to heal Naaman, but the king stands for people who think only in political terms. He had a political mindset. He thought that Naaman was using this as an excuse to pick a conflict with Israel, to pick a quarrel. He was obviously a deeply unspiritual man who didn't think that maybe God had brought Naaman or that he should refer Naaman to the prophet Elisha. He was never thinking that God was at work. The king was a political man who thought he had all the answers. He thought he was inside a political box, but he had no answers. He was a foolish, unspiritual man, limited to a political outlook. How many there are today who think that all the answers lie in politics? The Bible says no. And this king too is humbled by seeing his fear, his foolishness and his helplessness in the face of this problem. Politics has its place, but it cannot solve our problems. Then there's Gehazi, Elisha's servant, who turns out to be a greedy and deceitful opportunist, a Judas. He thought that Elisha, the man of God, was stupid and had missed an opportunity by refusing Naaman's gifts of gratitude. So he runs ahead, tells a lie, 
get some of uh, Naaman's wealth that he brought for Elisha to uh, set himself up in business. He wants to be rich. He wants to exploit the foreigner. But as a lover of money and power, he is not just humbled, he is punished by God. He is given leprosy, not only he, but his family forever. He is humbled severely. But then lastly, we have the mighty prophet Elisha. Elisha stands here as the true man of God. He's got power, he's got purity, he, he, he's not influenced by money or gifts. He's got integrity, he's got generosity of spirit towards the foreigner, Naaman. He's in touch with God. He's courageous to speak God's word both to Naaman and also to his servant Gehazi in announcing God's judgment upon him. Elisha is here a towering figure of both compassion and courage. And God is telling us in this story where true power lies in this world. It lies with the man or woman and indeed the boy or girl who hears God who knows God, who does God's will, who speaks God's word and follows God's way with courage and compassion and who has the Spirit of God in their lives leading and guiding. Those are the people who will influence and shape the world's destiny, not the holders of high political office. Jesus' second beatitude was the meek shall inherit the earth. It's a quote from the Psalms and it will come true because it's God's word. God doesn't really care that much who's sitting in the seats of political power in the countries of our world. But he does care if you and me as his followers are people of courage, integrity, compassion and who are learning and living by the word of God. And to finish... I wonder what happened to the little girl after Naaman was healed. I would like to suggest, though we're not told it, that she reaped a very, very rich reward. She would have been showered with gifts. She would have been raised in the family's estimation. And both she and her future, and probably any children that she might ever have, and so on, were all fantastically blessed because she was a faithful and true witness in a foreign land. God has blessed me through this meditation on his word today. I hope it has blessed you as we look at the world in which we live, and that it may also encourage you to seek God daily through reading his inspired and holy word.